We now move to the short ThreadX feature overview. We are going to see thread, memory pools, semaphore, mutexes, queues, events, and timers. Threads, I can only add that uh, you have to go through the Microsoft documentation, so docs.microsoft.com, to learn more. We have so preemption priority, preemption threshold, time slicing, so I'm not going to go through details into this specific session. Instead, I can uh, introduce you the memory pool, the different memory pool strategy we have. We have byte pool and block pool. So byte pool it's, is a sequence of bytes allocated in RAM, very similar to the heap in C. So typically the thread is filling this pool in what is called a first to fit manner. So basically we use the first free block of memory. And if we get a memory request, bigger than the available space, we will definitely fall into fragmentation issues. So with byte pool, you can have fragmentation issues. Just to add, every byte pool can come with its own control block, having uh, the start address, the name, and, and the size. On the other hand, you can go for the block pool. So it consists in blocks of memory of fixed length. So for this reason, we do not fall into fragmentation issue. And of course, I can create pools with different dimensions. And typically, pool access is quicker than byte pool. So pool block access is quicker than byte pool access. And of course, every pool have a control block indicating the name, the starting address, and the byte number. Semaphores, you have probably seen them before. They are used to control access to common resources. Uh, they are also used for thread synchronization and mutual exclusion. So a task like T1 here could have to wait for a semaphore from T2 before going on with execution. So we can imagine a situation where we return from an interrupt subroutine and uh, we can, for example, give a semaphore to indicate that data is ready. And uh, actually there are two types of semaphores binary and uh, counting semaphores. Binary count only 0 and 1, as the name says. Of course, 1 in case I can give access to the resources. Binary semaphore is actually very similar to mutex, and we will see later which are, which are the minimal differences. You can have also counting semaphore. So we use them normally to handle a peripheral that can have only limited number of simultaneous accesses and users. For example, in the text duo, we have semaphore to control the access to sockets that can be opened as uh, they can only handle a limited number of users. So ThreadX provides a 32-bit uh, semaphore and uh, the typical operation for the counting semaphore are TX get and TX put. So the get operation decreases the semaphore by one. And uh, if the semaphore is zero, the operation is not successful. Of course, the inverse of get operation is the put, which uh, increases the semaphore by one. We have seen the semaphore and uh, we now go through the mutex, which means uh, mutual exclusion. They are useful to indicate the availability of a resource and to control the access to critical uh, resource. So they are similar to binary semaphores. But the main difference is typically the mutex is closed and opened in the same thread. Message queues are primary means of inter-thread communication and they are used to exchange resources. They are typically implemented as FIFO. So it means that the first element to be added is the first to be read and messages are inserted in the front and read from the tail of the queue. And when I insert a message, I do what say an in queue, and uh, when I read it's a DQ. Um, and normally a message that holds a single, uh, sorry, a queue that holds a single message is commonly called a mailbox. Uh, message are normally copied into the queue using a uh, queue send, so TX underscore Q underscore underscore send and are copied from a queue using a TX underscore Q underscore receive. The only exception to this is when a thread is suspended while waiting for a message on an empty queue. In this case, the next match search sent to the queue is placed directly into the thread's destination area.
So events flag are uh, basically ways to synchronize the thread and uh, they are arranged normally in group of uh, 32 bits. Normally, you see here, even from these slides, you see that it's possible to set uh, the clear of an event flag using and or logic operation. And uh, normally you see, you see here that you can uh, condition the operation of a certain thread by an event related to different threads. In general, you can have, like in this example, a thread uh, that is put in running mode only if both uh, B1 and B0 bits are, are on. And uh, in this case, you see different combination which are not putting the thread in running mode uh, because the only real combination that will enable us to, uh, to start and to rightly uh, run the thread number one and have the two threads on is the situation in which B1 and B0 on the event register are, are set and this triggers the execution of thread one. So it's a good strategy to synchronize different threads for more complex uh, applications. Then we have software timers that provides to the application the ability to execute uh, function at a specific intervals of time. So normally we have hardware timers in STM32, but you may want to use a software timer. We can have one shot timer or periodic timers. And uh, I always link you here to the Microsoft.com uh, repository where you can definitely learn more. And uh, another thing we can provide is with the thread axis uh, module component. Module components provide an infrastructure for applications to dynamically load modules that are built separately from the resident portion of the application. And these are especially useful in situations where, let's say, the application code size exceeds the available memory. So you can also use the modules when new features are required to be added after the core image is deployed. You can also dynamically load the modules when, for example, you need a firmware update. And with that, we move uh, to something that can be of your interest, like a ThreadX footprint. So we see the footprint in bytes of the core service, the queue, and all the elements that we have discussed. So the queue, the events, the semaphore, the mutex, the block memory service, and the byte memory services. So this is just to give you uh, an information regarding uh, the, the footprint of ThreadX.